Hi, Keith here. In this video, I'm going to do something I thought I had already made a video of, but if I have, I can't find it. Anyway, I'm working with the same kind of simulated data I often use for these videos, where we've got four environmental variables, depth of sediment, nutrients and hydrocarbons, counts of abundance of a set of species across here, a couple of summary biological variables, number of species and total abundance, and over here three factors, CVI, region and site. And there's a blank column in here because that's what Primer wants for its import format. So here's a map showing how this is set up. Um, CVI is impact here versus control. And remember, we're looking at a marine benthic community. Worms, crustaceans and mollusks living on and in the sediment, potentially being affected by pollution from these oil platforms being incorporated in the bottom sediments. Current runs north to south quite strongly and the water is 25 meters deep at the north down to 75 meters deep at the south and other environmental variables change which you'll be able to see in the data. So the factors impact versus control, west versus east region and then site 1 versus site 2 at each of those locations. And here is the data. Now one thing we might want to do here is to do an analysis of variance looking at hydrocarbon HC concentration. It certainly looks like it differs just going by the numbers. Here we are in Minitab which is what I use for analysis of variance and I've moved those uh, factor variables over towards the front of the file to make it easier to see what's going on. So we'll go STAT and we've got ANOVA and we've got two options that work here, balanced ANOVA because we've got three replicates for each site or general linear model. Let's go with balanced ANOVA and one of the options here I've got is to use the restricted form of the model. I'm not going to talk about that today but one day I should. In some cases it will make a difference, in other cases it won't. Um, and graphs, I'm going to have the 4in1 so I can look at residuals. Um, results, I'll have the expected mean squares. And away we go. And uh, having a look at the graph of residuals, this is not looking too good in terms of the analysis of variance assumptions. Um, they don't look, residuals don't look to be too normally distributed down here, they're a bit skewed. Uh, the points aren't falling on a line for the normal probability plot, so it's kind of a wing zing bendy thing. Uh, versus order doesn't matter here because they're just randomly taken samples. But this one does versus fifth residuals down here, quite a uh, small range and a very big range for up here. So we've got also variance heterogeneity. Okay, well let's look at the results anyway. Um, this is telling me what is being divided by what to get the analysis of variance table up there. Um, so, um, the error term down here is 25265 up there and the CVI versus region interaction is being divided by the site term to get the F ratio and do the test and in fact CVI itself and region are also being divided by site. Site is just being divided by the error term. So we get the F ratios up there and P values. So there's a significant difference CVI, not unexpected. No regional difference. Um, certainly no site variability here. 
and the CVI versus region is 0.06 so there's some evidence for an interaction but probably not enough to reject the null at this stage. What about if I do the other option, general linear model? General linear model uses the unrestricted version of uh, the unrestricted version of the model. Um, graphs, we don't need those, they're going to look exactly the same, so I can turn those off. Um, options here, yeah. uh, we want adjusted type 3 sums of squares, so that's fine, and I don't need to do anything else. I'm not going to do any comparisons. Um, results, results, results. Uh, I don't want unusual observations or coefficients. Away we go. And the numbers we get there are identical to the numbers we got there. And if we go down here, it's basically the same thing. The tests are being done the same, so there's going to be no difference between the restricted and unrestricted versions here. That tends to happen with more complicated designs. But, I hear you say, but these residuals are an issue and the data is definitely not normally distributed. I could try doing a transformation and that might make things better. Supposing it doesn't, what do I do? Well, I can head on over to Primer. Oh, and I've already done the analysis there, but I'll walk us through it. Here I've got just selected the hydrocarbon as the variable of interest. And now I'm going to do Euclidean distances. So I've just taken the option to calculate Euclidean distances. Now remember, normally when I'm doing perm manover, or using perm manover, I'm selecting the entire suite of variables because I want to look at the entire suite of environmental variables at the same time to test for differences, or the entire suite of biological variables to test for differences in composition. But if I just select one variable like this, use Euclidean distance, as I've done here, create a design, and I've already gone through and set it up, so we've got CVI, region, site, and if I select a, very, a site to be nested, as I've done here, Permanova automatically makes it a random factor, and that is the correct choice most of the time. Very, 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 very occasionally it isn't, but most of the time. So and then I can go ahead and Permanova here, leave all the options as they are and go and here we go. Now, let's see if I can get these things showing up on the same screen. That will be a little bit tricky. Uh, now, results here. Pull this one, wrong one, pull that one across a bit, and pop up the primer. Not too bad. Okay, what you can see is that the numbers for the permanova are the same as the numbers for the anova. Yeah, they may not look it, but let's go through them. CV is, ah, uh, sorry, the, the F is 60. 6,877.47, the same. For region, 0.91. F over here, 0.91, the same. 0.01, uh, it's not matching. It's not matching because um, Minitab and Primer are putting that in a different order. So 6.72 here for the interaction, 6.72 here for the interaction. The other term here is the site. So 0 0.01 and 0 0.01 for the site there. So I get exactly the same numbers for the analysis, but what differs between Primer and Permanova 
is where these p-values come from. If you know anything about permanova, you know that the p-values come from permutation. So randomizing the data while keeping appropriate bits of it together. Now, that permutation process and generating the p-values in this way does not require that the va uh, values, the, the values are normally distributed. There is certainly no requirement whatsoever for the residuals or for the values themselves to be normally distributed for the permanover to be valid. There is an assumption about dispersion, but in the manual they seem to suggest that even if there are differences in dispersion, as they certainly are for this data, um, the results are still going to be fairly reliable. Now, there is one issue we have to look at that I'll get to in a minute. Um, I've done this now for quite a large number of data sets, and the p-values from the f-distribution, which is what Minitab is using, generally come out to be fairly similar to the p-values from permutation. Now, there is a, a limitation to the p-values from permutation. Now let's get some bigger again. And that is down here, the uni unique permutations. If I go back here and run the permanover, you'll see it's set to do 999. If I want more precise results, more uh, precise results, I can do that. Now, it gives me more permutations for the test for site, which I'm not especially interested in, but the unique permutations for the others don't change because these are being tested over site. And there's only a limited number of sites. So the unit, unique perms here are small and not really large enough to trust for this particular set of data. Uh, this problem doesn't happen that often, but it does happen. So an alternative procedure here is to do the Monte Carlo tests. And this generates the p-values in a different way. I'm not going to try and explain what the different way is because I don't entirely have my head around it. But this then gives us results which are very similar to the results from Minitab. CB, very small p-value. Region is um, 0.4, not significant. Uh, the interaction is 0.06, so it's just as with Minitab marginal and the site is definitely not significant either for the p-perm or for the Monte Carlo test. So what we were able to do here using permanova is to do an analysis of variance, get the same numbers in the table as we would using a Minitab or any other package, but generate the p-values by a permutation process, a randomization process that does not require normal distributed data. Definitely not. That, that is completely out and has only a relatively weak assumption about dispersion and is relatively unaffected by differences in dispersion in my experience so far. The interesting thing is that it we get almost identical results for p-values through permutation randomization as through going to the F distribution. And that, I think, is a sign of how robust the analysis of the variance itself is, that we, it gives the same results that we get from permutation. OK, that's all I'm going to put in this particular video. Later on, I might look at the issue of the restricted version of the model, but it's something that's rather more technical and 
of less interest perhaps. Okay, time to finish the video. Uh, just out of interest, after finishing, I went back to Minitab and did a log transform of the hydrocarbons and the result then is pretty good. Pretty good on a line, similar dispersion here and here and not exactly normal but largely unimodal and not terrifically skewed. So I could rerun the analysis using using the log transform data. And let's have a look. There's the result. Pretty much the same as we got with the untransformed data and with the data in Primer Permanova. Small p value there, these two not significant, and the CVI it goes up a little bit, so it's uh, getting further away from being significant. Okay, let's really finish there.